Well, good morning. It's Thursday morning. Trust you're having a blessed week. You know, um, I always like to have a confession with our church, and I say to them, uh, I believe you're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Uh, blessed going in, blessed going out. And everything that you put your hands to is blessed of the Lord. I believe the Lord wants to bless you every day of your life, not just Sundays, you know. And I believe he wants to bless you in everything that you do. And that includes your work, you know, the job that you have. I believe for favor for you in that job, amen. amen. Uh, raises in that job, people to see the value that you have in that. And uh, that's important for us. Mm -hmm. Well, we're talking about love, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And let me preface this. I ended this with yesterday, but let me preface this at the very beginning that the love that we are talking about is not your love. It is the love of God that emanates through you because you are a new creature in Christ. Amen. Amen. You choose to do these things. It's like the fruit of the Spirit. We think, oh, I've got to do these things. I've got to. It's not you doing it, okay? Quit. Quit. Just let God live big in you and his love will flow out of Amen. you, okay? And you'll fulfill these. So number six, we talked about five yesterday. Number six is love does not act unbecomingly. Love is not rude or discourteous. It is not careless or thoughtless. It does not carry on in a fashion that would be considered insensitive to others. I guess that's saying you need to put others before yourself, Tom. Yes, I believe I, so. I mean, that's like when you get um, in line at HEB or wherever you are. Yeah. Do you Are you courteous to people around you? Or you, do you get mad at this checker? Or do you get mad at your server? Or are they rude? Or are do you, you get rude? rude? You become rude right. with people. And you so, know? again, it always goes back to self. We yeah. talked about yes, this it is. yesterday. Uh, so many times when we don't allow the love of God to flow out of us, it's just because we're being selfish. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. He says, love does not seek its own. Love does not manipulate situations or scheme or devise methods that will twist situations to its own advantage. Mm. Yeah. Manipulate. Yeah, manipulation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely is a selfish act. Yes, it Amen. is. Amen. To get people to do what the things, and many times we'll use emotions. Right. To do that. Well, when I die, you'll be you'll be <laughs> sad then that I'm not around. Right, Pastor Marcia. Yeah. Love um, is not provoked. It says love does not deliberately engage in actions or speak words that are so sharp that they cause an ugly or violent response. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture in Proverbs that says, a soft answer turneth away wrath. Mm -hmm. You know, that is that is good, I'll tell you. Right, and also a scripture that says, do not provoke your children to wrath. Yes, it does. And I believe that can even be adult children. You yes. know, it's not just little children. We need to be aware of who we are. How are we provoking our kids? We need to provoke them to live the word, not provoke yeah. them to rebel. Yeah, Amen? yeah absolutely. Love does not take into account a wrong suffered. This is this one's hard, okay? Mm -hmm. Love does not deliberately keep record of wrongs or past mistakes. Yeah. You know, I always tell the story of the two guys. Yeah. They're talking about their wives and the arguments they have. And one guy goes, man, every time my wife and I have an argument, she becomes historical. And he goes, you mean hysterical, don't you? He says, no, I mean historical. She can remember everything I've ever done wrong. Amen. You know, and that's exactly what that, that, that right there is. Uh, does not take into account a wrong suffered. How many of you have been wrong? That's all unforgiveness. Uh, <laughs> how many of you have been wrong? Every one of us have been wronged at some time or not. But does that keep you, do you let that... Build the wall between you so that you're not able yeah. to love people, okay. all right? Love does not rejoice in unrighteousness. Love does not feel overjoyed when it sees injustice done to someone else. Yeah, you know, they always say, that's karma. They got what they deserve. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, there is a law out there, in effect, that's called you reap, what you, reap. You, you reap what you sow. Yeah. And so sometimes things do, do, uh, do happen to people because of the choices they make. But you should not rejoice in that. You should not. Amen. In fact, you should be praying for them yeah. while they're going through it, that they'll realize it, repent, and things yeah. will change. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the last one is love rejoices in the truth. Love is elated, thrilled, ecstatic, 
and overjoyed with the truth. Mm-hmm. When someone comes to the to the revelation of Christ, you know, I mean, you know, was I've heard people say when people get born again, they thought they, well, I don't know if they're really born again, uh, and they'll go here, they'll, they'll say, well, we'll just see if it lasts. Yeah. It's see, to me, like, that's the wrong attitude. That is. It should be encouraging. Yes, I mean, yeah. absolutely. Praise God, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, Amen. so love, this love that we're talking about is not something you're manufacturing. This is the love of God that emanates from Amen. you. God bless you. We pray for you. Have a blessed day today.